uh, okay let us let us start some interaction if you have any question so sort yeah sort of sir good evening sir ha uh, bolo sir up sir sir i have like question like uh, we have seen in uh, like um, in many upanishad and uh, many uh, like stories from our vedas there are mentioned like uh, there were demons who used to do that tapasya and for thousands of years hundreds of year and uh, after uh, like god came to their vision then they asked uh, uh, like uh, some Uh, evil boon like uh, for us uh, killing someone or getting power then sir uh, i want to know that uh, uh, like uh, doing this tapasya how in the process their soul was still contaminated with the evil and uh, they were like they are praying to god so this they should be like uh, changed to good being like uh, they should become good person and uh, they are still keeping evil thoughts and uh, doing tapasya and god is also coming to give uh, the boon how is it possible uh you see it is not you know anybody can perform tapasya nowadays nowadays also you see there are many do they perform tapasya just for example somebody wants to study study is not easy thing yes sir you enter into iit every day you get up and you have to confront with a quiz or assignment or something so doesn't mean that you become pure uh, no sir it is not what is your consciousness that that matters okay sir, but, but sir uh, god uh, never like aids us in our evil doing then how uh, why does he give boon to them uh, like uh, to perform everybody by... you are been you have been empowered to do something you know yes why you are not becoming a rickshaw puller then you are given something that's why you are able to study yes sir is a boon on you also yes, yes sir there is no distinction see as far as soul is concerned soul in a rickshaw puller or soul in a ant and soul in you there is no distinction but certain boon in you that makes you again okay, to be able to read to be able to access to more information to be to be able to uh, digest it yes sir okay so boon everybody has got it yes sir. what that is not important what is important is that are you able to understand about the soul yes in bhagavad gita it is said in 15th chapter dwabhimau purusau loke chara chara chaeva ari chara sarani bhutani kutastho chara muchyate is saying in the very body in this very body when i in this i uh, think there are two personality yes sir one is khara the dress the other is akhara the atma khara means which is destructible yes sir so soul enters into a dog's body and then that that dog's behavior enter yes. into a bird's body there is a bird behavior Okay, yes, so yes. each body has certain potency, ability. Yes. You enter into an aquatic's body, you have another potency. Yes. So everybody is given certain potency, but these are all khara. Only in the human form of body, 
you can understand that you are atman so it doesn't matter okay what body you have got it what matters are you able to make a distinction between shara and akshara atma and the material consciousness spiritual consciousness and material consciousness yes so one can pray with the material consciousness one can pray with spiritual consciousness yes sir but you will pray with spiritual consciousness only if you recognize you are a spiritual being yes, unfortunately we always are attached to our material being although we know this body can end at any time but we are so attached to this body yes sir we are very possessed of this body try to understand we know this body will come to an end now you are very young you have many dreams but come 30 years 40 years all your dreams will go to dustbin because they will make no sense in 70 years you will not say oh i would love a young 15 year 16 year old girl can you say that no sir eh huh? are a 70 no, year uh, woman would say i will now love uh, uh, i will start loving as a 16 year old boy that body has lost its potency okay yeah. or the dream big dreams that you saw in the youth you will not see in young uh, old days but if you are a spiritual being it doesn't matter whether you are young or you are old it doesn't matter. if you are a spiritual being you are always young okay so what we are giving emphasis is athatho brahma jigyasa now you start searching for akshara yes okay kutastu akshara muchyate kuta kuta means that is hidden it is because of atma see atma is not dependent on the body but body is dependent on atma try to understand this yes your whole bodily demeanor that i am saurav kumar i am a big engineer okay yes. i am very great okay so this whole idea this 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 personality it is a temporary thing it hinges on atma but atma is not dependent on the saurav kumar the body yes sir even if saurav kumar will collapse atma will not collapse atma will get another body yes another personality okay yes sir so the very idea that we are searching or we are going for different boon everybody each one of you have got some boon okay yes sir you you have got some boon by which you are able to study and there are people who are on the who are called underworld done they have also boon eh? without studying without understanding 2 plus 2 equal to 4 they have lot of money lot of wealth which you cannot yes. even dream of yes uh, you can't dream of yes. okay so everybody very gratefully is given different kind of boon but the real boon is whether you are able to understand your spiritual self okay yes. so unless you pray for that how can you achieve divine quality yes sir okay yes sir thank you sir thank you sir others hello good evening sir yeah one by one manojit ah 
Now, who are there? Ame Karanchkar. Hare Krishna, sir. Ah, bolo. Ame. Am I audible, sir? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. So, first of all, I would like to thank you for uh, the wonderful uh, sessions which gave us a wonderful overview uh, about uh, what's written in the Bhagavad Gita and what's said by Bhagavan himself. Uh, so, uh, taking uh, so so I, I'd like to share what I learned and what I uh, the one for, one main point that I learned from from the from the sessions. So uh, the foremost and the most important point that I thought was uh, was about the three actors that you talked about, and uh, as, and and I've I've, uh, I've tried and, and started practicing and meditating on on identifying myself with with the soul rather than the the three modes of nature which actually work in the material material world, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, I'm I'm now started practicing and and sort of detaching myself from the material world, uh, not in a not in a bad sense, but now I've started uh, sort of understanding that I am completely independent and nothing can affect me, uh, which which happens in this materialistic world. Uh, so so that is one very important thing that I learned. Uh, and uh, sir, actually I have a theory, and uh, if if you can please tell me if I'm wrong or right. So we all know, all know that there are three actors, right? And so the soul, which is I, I myself, have only one choice, which is to either to surrender to Krishna mm -hmm. or to surrender to Maya. And whatever happens in this materialistic world is done by the three three modes of nature or the three gunas. Uh, so my theory is that if I, I as an Atma have just this choice of uh, surrendering to uh, either surrendering to Krishna or to Maya, then in a way I am helpless uh, in front of these three gunas. And whatever happens uh, in this materialistic world is carried out with the three gunas, and which essentially, for me, explains the concept of destiny. So, is this is this theory right, or or am I missing something, sir? Thank you, sir. So you are saying that as long as you don't surrender to Krishna. You under you are under the three modes of material nature, and you are helpless. You are, you have no say over your destiny. That's what your question. Yes, sir. Yeah, correct. Correct. Very much correct. I'll give you the example. All of you, please hear it. We just recently we read Brahma's prayer to Krishna. And towards the end, Brahmaji is saying to Krishna, Oh Krishna, our own material desires are like thieves whom we maintain. Suppose you are maintaining someone in your own house and that person is, is a thief. What will happen to you? What will happen? Am I? Suppose you didn't know this person is a thief, but you have kept in his, in his, him in your house. What will happen? Uh, you will be hurt if, if, if he does something wrong. And he will rub everything, wonder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He will rub you from everything. Okay? Yes, sir. So it is like that. So Brahmaji is saying all your material desires are like the thieves that you maintain. Hmm. Number one. Number two, he says, your so-called sweet home is a prison house. Your so-called sweet home is a prison house. And your so-called sweet relationship are like shackles in your feet if you have no connection with Krishna. This is what Brahma said. Now I'll explain to you what you said. You see that suppose you are, you know, material energy has given you certain boon by which you have a nice bungalow, nice family, everything is very nice, right? So what happens? Because you are in a nice house, nice family, everything is so nice, you are very attached. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So if you are attached, what will happen at the end of when you end your body? What will happen? 
you're not searching for the truth and so you will you will again come back to enjoy so, at the end of time what you will think you will think of your sweet home yes or no yes yes you will think of your sweet relationship yes or no yes and whatever the desires you have right yes sir definitely so most of the time you return to your own home in a lower form sometimes as a dog sometimes as a lizard sometimes as a rat or a, you know cat so this is what is happening today you are a very rich man and because of that you misused you will you will misuse your opulence yes or no yes sir so what will happen next life you'll be born poor you'll be born poor in a slum where you cannot commit cruelty that you committed when you are very rich the see once you allow yourself imagine Uh, have you seen the fall or uh, you know the high current of river yes sir even if you are a best swimmer what will happen suppose you jump onto it yeah you will flow with the current wherever current will take you can't determine so this three modes of material nature is like that current that possesses you sometime it makes you a male sometime female sometime bird sometime insect that is the greatest the trayate mahato bhayat that's why krishna is telling arjuna neha vikrama nasosti pratyavaya na vidyate torpam api asya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat neha vikrama nasosti is saying even little endeavor in krishna consciousness can save you this greatest peril to be thrown into this current of maya three more so material so so called destiny is in a hallucination the real destiny is that you are a devotee of krishna you may, you heard it just be with krishna that is the real destiny and that is eternal destiny unfortunately even after hearing this we don't hear oh gita mein likha hai are wo behra kuch bol diya bakwas kar diya hame brainwash kar diya so why this happens to us because we do not have sufficient dharma within us to be able to put faith in the words of krishna and his word that is real destiny anybody who is able to value the ideal of bhagavad gita he has real destiny because mrut what is that mrutur ma amrutam gamaya you give up mortality enter into immortality that is real destiny this so called destiny people are talking is illusory eh huh? have you seen napoleon bonaparte how powerful he was but same people same people who gave him respect they entered into his palace pulled him and killed him similarly st petersburg where this communism started nikolai ii was inside the palace lenin went with the normal people and pulled them arrested them within a month they killed all the family and then lenin thought 
He is going to rule for eternity. Lenin died, but his communism also died within less than a century. These are all hallucination. Anybody who take pleasure in all these things are completely victim of so-called illusion. So our so-called destiny is an illusion because three modes of material nature in its current, once you surrender to three modes of material nature, you are in its current. Sometime you are a big manga, sometime you are a raja. Sometime you are Rani, sometime you are uh, uh, bird or animal or plant. That cycle you are going on. So to, to make a destiny there is nonsense. Nobody. Okay. So the real if any one of you, even one of you, have realized from our discussion that Bhagavad Gita is the real wealth, Krishna is the real wealth. I now belong to Krishna, I know it. So I start my surrendering process to Krishna. I do not want to be puppet in the hand of Maya and thinking that I can build a destiny. Suppose you build a nice sand house along the beach, what would happen? Even if it is so nice, you just have to watch one night, the tide will, tide will come and wash it away. Exactly the same thing. Is that clear, Amma? Yes, sir. Very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, the previous uh, lectures were very much influential, and uh, I also started reading uh, the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, and sir, I want to like uh, ask one thing: is that uh, like uh, like I uh, believe and also convinced that uh, the spiritual and the material thing are different and. Uh, uh, I believe in that, uh, but when in coming in a stressful situation, we just forget it that uh, there is a spiritual being, and I like uh, we uh, like mistakenly think that I am means the material body. So that leads to the stress, uh, stress, uh, and also uh, like. Uh, but but when I climb climb down the like, I understand that yes, uh, that was a material thing, uh, but the stress remains in the body, and uh, that's the problem. And sir, the second question is that if we think that uh, uh, that everything is material, so we uh, like we may uh, get lost from the competition. Like uh, we must also compete uh, in this world. Uh, so uh, so there, I cannot find a great reason uh, like why not to think that it is material. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, Manojit. Sometime. Have you experienced, you see a rope and you take it for a snake? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you? Yes, sir. And what happens to you? Uh, what so, happens? Uh, you uh, get fr frightened. Like... You get frightened, correct. And that, that, that fear remains until? Until getting the real realization of that uh, uh, rope. This is a rope. You understand? This rope and snake, you should always meditate. The moment you realize this is rope, all your anxiety is gone. As long as you think this is snake, you'll be frightened, you'll be in anxiety, you'll be in everything. So, what is rope? Rope is self-realization. In a human form of life, I must strive for self-realization. Anybody who is in the path of self-realization, he will never be frightened. 
by any situation. But if you are looking for sense gratification, which is called snake, you want to enjoy this material world, then you'll be always under fear. Because in this material world, by striving to enjoy the material world, sometime you'll have success, sometime you'll have failure. Sometime you'll have happiness, sometime you'll have distress. You cannot avoid this. Just like the whole world is facing the pandemic. So everybody is suffering because of pandemic. But those who are self-realized, they are not put out by pandemic because they are continuing their life. Because they know the material world is like this. So they are not put up. So to be in knowledge means it is like recognizing this is not a snake, this is rope. To be in ignorance is like it is snake. So you have to make a choice. I can only tell you, speak to you, persuade you, but you have to take that decision. You want to identify with the snake or you want to identify with the rope. It is your choice, not my choice. Okay, the, your second question is, should we give up everything material? No. You can use everything in striving for self-realization. If you have some wealth, you can use that. You have some knowledge, you can use that. If you have some education, you can use that. And that is what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. He says, Yat karosi, yad asnasi, yad juhasi, dadasi yat. Yat tapasasi kaunteya, tad kurusa madarpana. So Lord Krishna is not saying that you reject everything and then you become perfected. Rejection is an attitude. It is a state. So, suppose I have certain wealth, I can use that wealth in, you know, sometime, for example, when I started becoming Krishna conscious, I had some money with me. I went to Vrindavan and I purchased entire Bhagavatam set. Those days, in 1991-92, you know, we were getting 2,400 uh, rupees as a fellowship, a scholarship, PhD scholarship. And Bhagavatam set was 3,600 rupees. I went, I purchased, and that same Bhagavatam set is still with me. Okay. I have knowledge, isn't it? Because I have knowledge, I didn't reject it. I'm able to speak to all young people like you. Because I can internalize Bhagavad, the Bhagavad Gita teaching and I can describe that teaching in a way you can understand. Because I know our middle class society children, the way they think. What is their mindset? And there are, there are constraints. They have a parents to take care of. They have a sister to, to give in, to take, you know, to give in marriage or for education. So I am very well aware of constraint of a middle class family. 
And that gives me an extra cushion how to present Bhagavad Gita to each one of you and guide each one of you such that you can lead a life of spiritual emancipation within your own constraint easily. So when you come to me, oh, this uh, education is not good for me, so what should I do? I will say, no, you continue this education because this is necessary for your family stability. First of all, you are a family person. You have your parents, you have your siblings. They have certain expectation. So how you become stable? If you are not peaceful, how can you practice Krishna consciousness? Once one person came when Lord Buddha was preaching in Sarnath and Ananda he is one of the uh, uh, you know uh, primary disciples, one of his primary disciples, he started speaking to that person and eh, all the Buddhist uh, conclusions. Ah. And Ananda was baffled because he is not seeing any conscious change in that person. And then he went to uh, 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 Lord Buddha and said, you know, I have spent almost whole day and no change I am seeing. And Lord Buddha said, that person must be very hungry. Go and ask him, does he need some food? And that's exactly was the case. So when his stomach was filled with hunger, how can he digest philosophy? Yes, sir. Okay. So some amount of material necessities are unavoidable. You must be peaceful enough to focus on the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Okay. So, because we are conditioned with the material nature from time immemorial, we cannot throw. And more important also, you see from the example of uh, Krishna has given, even Arjuna wanted to give up the war. He didn't want to fight. He wanted to go to jungle. And Krishna said, no, you are a warrior. Your nature is to fight. If you don't fight now on behalf of me, then when war takes place, that time you have to fight against my direction. It is better you fight on behalf of me and on glory. That's why Krishna is saying, Yat Karasi, whatever you do, Yadasnasi, whatever you eat, Yat Juhasi, whatever. Charity uh, uh, sacrifices you perform. Yet the dadasiyat, whatever charity you give, yet tapasasi, whatever austerity you perform, everything eh, you do as an offering to the absolute truth, Krishna. Yeah? Yes, okay. There is one more thing, sir, of, like in the first question, like. How do I like uh, do not get frightened uh, by in the in the darkness? I always get frightened. So and that is what I'm saying. That is what only when you accept Krishna consciousness, you'll be. That's what I'm saying. You have to be in the state of rope. Rope means to accepting the path of self realization. Those who have embraced the path of enlightenment, fear cannot frighten them. No amount of fear. And I can give you unlimited examples. Once I know my nature, my nature is that of spiritual. And I must get back to that nature. I'm determined. There can be no fear. Material world, anybody who lives, 
they are always constantly in fear. All of them. So materialistic life is full of anxiety. Spiritual life is full of joy. You need to practice to recognize it. Are you able to follow? Yeah. Uh, sir, I have a doubt. Uh, like Krishna is the real truth, we all know that's fine. Mm -hmm. But what if someone uh, worships, worships Ram or Hanumanji or Shivji instead of Krishna? So is it also fine? Good question. Uh, It's not a question of simply worshipping. What is your idea of worship? Normally when we say we worship, we are selfish. We go to the temple and beg to the master, give me this, give me that. Yes or no? Yes. That is not worship. That is business. Like you go to your father every month and tell, my father, this is... Worship would be when your father has given you 1,000 rupees per month. And out of 1,000 rupees, you save 100 rupees. And in that 100 rupees, you purchase a gift for your father and give it to him. That is called worship. Like that means you know that you are dependent on your father to sustain your life. So you are taking money from him, but then you want to appreciate him that he is doing so much for you. So you do little austerity and save little money and purchase a gift. And next time when you go home, you give him a gift. That is called worship of the father. So similarly, Krishna doesn't need anything from us. He is sustaining us. It is he who has made the arrangement of the sun for the sunlight, moon for the moonlight. And he has arranged everything. He has arranged for vegetation. He has arranged for the rain. He has arranged for water. He has arranged for air. He has arranged everything for us. But appreciating him that he is doing this much. So, worship means becoming selfless. Our understanding of worship is wrong. Pratik. Yes, sir. Uh, like we are devoting ourselves to Krishna. Similarly, if we are devoting ourselves no, no, to... No, no, it is not. Try to understand. We are devoted to Krishna. Means we are following his instruction. Krishna says, Manmana bhava mad bhakta madhyaji maam namaskuru. Do we follow? Krishna says, Patram puspam phalam toyam yame bhaktya prayachati. Krishna says, Brahma bhuta prasannatma na sochati na kankati. Whatever he says, we that is our way of life. By making, when you say, can I worship X or Y or Z? That is a sentimental thing. First of all, Rama and Krishna are non-different if you go by Shastra. Yes, sir. They are same Vishnu. But Hanumanji is a devotee. Hanuman is a devotee. 
Yeah. Is a devotee of Lord Ram. So anybody who's devotee of Lord Ram is also devotee of Lord Krishna because they're not different. And so there talking, is no distinction. And talking about Shivji. Shivji is also a devotee. Vaishnavanam yatha sambhu. Among all Vaishnavas, the best is Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva constantly chants Sri Rama, Jay Rama, Jay Jay Rama. He initiated his wife Parvati also in this mantra. Sri Rama, Jay Rama, Jay Jay Rama. So when you see our idea of worship is wrong, Pratik, try to understand this. Yes, sir. We need to embrace. See, you are all intelligent people. You can understand and internalize what is Bhagavad Gita. Yes. I cannot bring a rickshaw puller and make him sit here and give him the discourse on Bhagavad Gita. Because he is struggling for maintaining his family with bread and butter. He has no time. At best, what I can do is, you know, I can make some prasadam, bhoga, and offer to Krishna and feed him some prasadam. That's all. I cannot. But you people are capable of understanding Bhagavad Gita. And then taking that message into your life and transforming your life. And then you can reform the society. So each one of you can become a great torchlight. Each one of you in your own right can become a great torchlight to lead this world. Started practicing Krishna consciousness in 1992. In uh, IIT Delhi, there was a boy from uh, Kerala. So he was a good friend of mine, but when I started practicing, I told him, please come and join us. This is very important. Then he would always tell me, I'm a great devotee of Lord uh, Krishna. And, uh, but he would never come. He will never come, he will never hear uh, I said, come and hear Bhagavad Gita. Why you are hesitating? And somehow because, uh, you know, he was my good friend, I was a little attached to him. I'll be always pursuing him. And every day I will knock at his door and give him some prasadam. And you'll tell him, request him. I'm going to take you next time. Please be on time here. But whenever I will go, his room will be locked. He knows that I will be coming. So he would lock his door and go leave somewhere. So one day I told him, my dear friend, why you are cheating me every day? Just once you come. Then he told you, come to my house, room. I will show you how great devotee I am of Lord Krishna. And then he took me to his room. I saw his room is so dirty. It is giving a very bad order, everything is all, uh, what is it called, uh, staggered and, uh, you know, you know, everything is stinking there. And I said, why he has brought me here? And then he opened his cupboard. That cupboard was also uh, worse than a garbage. And in that cupboard, cupboard, in one corner, there is a picture of Krishna. In front of the Krishna, there is a hill of Agarvati dust. And he told me, you see, every day I offer one Agarvati to Krishna. And I never fail it. If this is the idea of worship people have, then I can't help you. And this is why we have a last our own heritage. 
I, this is not worship. Putting agarbati. We we cannot describe who is Krishna. We cannot describe what is his instruction. We cannot describe what is his spiritual abode. We cannot describe what is the distinction between Brahman and uh, matter. And simply one, just like you know, in India, a Kartik Purnima went in thirtieth of November, and you would have seen. I don't know. You know, you cannot go to Ganga. So many so-called devout Hindus would come, and with flowers and uh, agarbatti and candle, they will put into the water uh, river uh, Ganga water to pollute it. Eh? We must, if we really love Ganga, we should we should not allow Ganga to be polluted. That is real love. So our we we have taken everything or we have converted everything into so-called sentimental rituals without any philosophy. This is the problem. Is that clear, Pratik? Yes, sir, clear. Okay. Any other question? Hello, sir. Uh, I am Deepak. Ah, uh, Deepak. So I have two questions. Uh, the yeah. first question is: uh, so till now I have been believing on karma yoga, but uh, on the last quiz, uh, uh, you told that uh, bhakti yoga is like uh, uh, important, more important than karma yoga. So, like, uh, I want an explanation for this, and for that I have a question. Um, Suppose one person is going out and uh, serving the poor, poor and suppose uh, he is like educating the poor, uh, poor people for three hours uh, a day and one person is going out and, uh, uh, and uh, spreading spirituality three hours a day. So which will be better actually I means so the, the one with karma yoga like the one who, who is educating and uh, ultimately, he is improving their life in future. So, he or who is spreading spirituality? So what this is, my what first is your conclusion? So, like uh, karma yoga is my. I believe in karma yoga till now. My point is that you educated him, right? Yes. What will happen to him at the end? Okay, so he will have a good life, but that will be materialistic, maybe. Then what will happen after that? He's still in ignorance. Yeah. The same yeah. point, what of the first point uh, that uh, I would think Amaya, Amaya said, Amaya or uh, Saurav? Uh, no, no, Amaya, Amaya said. Same thing. So you, so didn't, fast. You, you, you didn't help him at all because he is still in the flow of that current of Maya. You imagine the day you realize you are Satchit Ananda. You just think about it. The day you realize you are Satchidananda, that is the biggest celebration than any other, any other thing. I am giving you so many big, big example. You know, uh, I talked uh, talked to you about uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, Nikolai II. And you see that there's Michael Tremont who was getting $500 
for every word he was writing for Times Magazine. So that means, so imagine if you write an article for Times Magazine that has one thousand word, and uh, one thousand into five hundred. That's that's that was his power, and he committed suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, Hemingway, the old man on the sea, is you know that's a very famous. Uh, Wow. Hollywood movie. Ah, you know, uh, he was just, uh, uh, you know, in America, he was the most popular uh, novelist. He committed suicide. M my dear friend, you have to recognize karma yoga is not to help poor people. Karma yoga, any yoga means to understand that you are a spiritual being. Are yogis, they give up all comfort of life to go to the Himalayan bunker. Why? Because they realize all this, what you are observing in this material world is hallucination. And sometimes you may say, this is a charitable work and you can go and enjoy in heavenly planet. And let me tell you also what happens to you heavenly planet. Suppose you did some charitable work and you earned some piety. So you have some positive piety, pious account. And then Yamaraj will send you to the, uh, with a dress uh, in the heavenly planet. And once you go there in heavenly planet, there, Everything, you know, there everybody enjoys because everything there in heavenly planets, you have no uh, disease and you have no old age. No disease and no old age. In this Matya Loka, you have disease and old age, at least you realize that I'm going to die. Yes. But there you cannot even recognize you are going to die. And there, it is said, sometime you are in the embrace of your own lover and your account has become zero. No chance. You just fall from grace and you mix with the rain. And then in, you manifest in the form of a grain. And then when man eats it, you enter into his you enter into his semen and then suddenly again punar musika bhava you start again a new life same thing what you are gaining so this is what what i may said this so called destiny is a hallucination even if you go to a heavenly planet also there is hina punya martya loke provision Khinai punya, when your punya is khinya, khinya means is finished, exhausted. Martya loke pravishanti. Again you enter here. So your very idea that Are Baba, <laughs> you say that when uh, in in Arisi Rorkela, I finished my B.Tech in 1988. And after I passed out from Arisi Rorkela, I was feeling lonely within. I went to my attend my job and I felt so lonely. I came back to my alpha mater again to Arisi Rorkela and told my professor I would continue here only. And that time I had already developed a spiritual bent of mind. I had I purchased the Bhagavad Gita because I'm from Odisha. I purchased Odia Bhagavad Gita. Every day one chapter I will read. I will not understand anything. One thing I understood while reading 
when Krishna says to Arjuna that Nimitta Matra Bhava Sabya Sachi, you become my instrument. Internally, I felt I am only an instrument. That's all my capacity is, not more than this. And then I finished my master's there, and then I became a lecturer there, and then my supervisor, he, you know, uh, I was doing some PhD work with him. And then he was searching for a, a bride for me so that I get married and get settled there. At that time, I, uh, uh, I was, uh, hmm, uh, uh, reading one, you know, every day I, I, you know, read because those days I was very ascetic. I was only eating salads and uh, I hardly, I never talked to anybody. I remained within myself. I was very happy within myself. Okay. And when I heard that my uh, uh, professor is searching for a girl, immediately I left I had a job there and uh, I went to IIT Delhi. And after coming to IIT Delhi, because I was an ascetic, I could not enter into the uh, dining room. I said, oh, where I will eat? Then I started on my own in IIT Delhi, yoga mess. I went to Professor Sarma, I said, this is my life. Can you please help me? Because those days, now also probably this is true, if you uh, get admitted in a particular hostel, you have to pay the hostel mess fees, whether you eat there or you don't eat. And those days, I think 650 rupees you have to pay. And we were getting 2400, 650 into two means twice if you spend, it's all gone. And who would come? Suppose I start a mess, why somebody will pay twice? So then I convinced Professor Sarma that uh, I can manage some students. So Professor Sarma talked to Dean that time and, and somehow I put the notice in every hostel, particularly undergraduate hostel. I knew this uh, uh, postgraduate people. In those days in IIT Delhi, all postgraduates, they were only doing civil service, civil service, civil service. There is nothing else. So I went to the, for this undergrads and I got 20 Banya students. Those are Banya community. Because they're all vegetarian and they liked my idea. My yoga mess, my, I made a diet plan. What will be in the morning? What will be in the daytime? What will be in the evening? And they liked. And, uh, uh, and then uh, I started a yoga mess and I got 20 people and yoga mess started. Okay. And, uh, uh, but after one year, this mess also closed because Dean changed and he said, are we feeding uh, dogs food in the hostel that we will allow you as a special rivet? So he closed the yoga mess. So I became Punar Mashikamava. And those days I had this idea that only scientists and researchers, they do good to the world. Others are all Gotala party. Because those days you always heard about corruption, corruption, corruption. But when I came to IIT Delhi, I realized all professors are after funds and there is a lot of rivalries among groups. And, um, and that also illusioned me. So I lost interest in my city at that time also. Then I joined one spirit, uh, one the Sadhva mission run by Professor B.K. Tripathi. 1992, there was uh, this uh, uh, riot and uh, Hindu Muslim riot because of Babri demolition. So we used to go for 18 hours, used to work and protect the minorities and uh, in uh, Okla, Malviya Nagar. And those days, every Sunday we will go to these jugis in Delhi and teach the children. 
every day i remember my one of my friend is now professor in iit bhu sandeep kumar every day every sunday we go we have one set of children next sunday those children you won't find because they know that we will come exactly at 10 o'clock in the morning and they would vanish because they are not interested in study okay so we will drag because we have gone there and our ego will be hard so we will search another 10 20 boys and again teach them again from the very beginning i said what is fun this this is all nonsense are baba what you are saying uh, what is his name now दीपक 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 हम ये सब कर चुके हैं ओके सर यू अंडरस्टैंड दे सी वंस यू रियलाइज योर गोल इज टू अंडरस्टैंड हु यू आर फर्स्ट यू परफेक्ट योर लाइफ देन ओनली यू कैन डू वेलफेयर आई आई एम नॉट अगेंस्ट वेलफेयर But before you can do good to others, first you perfect yourself. Once you are perfected, whatever you do must be all right. There is no doubt about it. Okay. Okay. Here yeah, at this time, you know, this COVID time, you know, every when the lockdown started, I was personally cooking, and we are feeding thousand uh, children here near my uh, brick green. uh this uh, lever children yes i knew knew that sir ha huh? kind of later first you understand you are soul you are servant of krishna you internalize the spirit of bhagavad gita you follow is that clear to you now yes sir thank you sir so i have another question so uh, is there time or yeah 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 go ahead so this is a different question like uh, like geeta says that lord krishna is the uh, almighty and he is the creator of the uh, of our universe mm. so my question is uh, why means uh, this belief of lord krishna is only restric- restricted to indians so, like there are um, more than 200 countries in the world so uh. why don't they have any history of lord krishna and the, the spirituality we follow you see anybody would like to know who is god he will know that krishna is god krishna is not hindu god now in 120 countries all sections of the society are chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare i visited uh, as a visiting professor in eth zurich and my collaborator frank spider he, he was taking me in a tram to my accommodation and suddenly he saw a group of devotees standing doing hare krishna kirtan and he pointed to me he said lakshmi dad can't you see how crazy these people are i said why they are crazy Now see some singers so they are singing something and uh, looks very odd. Then I smile at him. I said, "This is Indian tradition. These people are following uh, Vedic culture, and you are shocked." Then we started discussing, and then he said that his wife is interested in yoga. I said, "You bring him to the temple because I was staying in his con temple in uh, Zurich." And next day he came with his wife. so when uh, 9/11 uh, attack happened on america and then george bush the then president of america addressed americans that time also his last sentence is allah krishna jesus bless america he said allah krishna Jesus bless America. This is the last sentence. You can also now uh, do a Google search. You will find it. So, so what does it mean that 
You know, Krishna is no more a Hindu god, my dear friend. Is no more. Some, everybody may not be able to accept because they are not presented it. Once upon a time, the entire world was Vedic culture. And this is only 5,000, less than 5,000 year old. What is America? America is only 400, 500 year old nation. Australia is 400, 500 year old nation. Canada is 150 year old. And so they are all very new. This Christianity and uh, Muslim religions, they are absurd in this Kali Yuga. Mostly they are not there. And uh, uh, there are some examples I will tell you. There was one professor, UK professor. Uh, he was traveling uh, and his plane crashed. This happened early uh, 20th century. And, uh, but in that class, he survived. When he survived, he realized there must be God. How is it that the plane doesn't have you know, any identity? It is completely burnt into ashes. Everybody has died, but I, have, I am saved. So he realized that there is God. But who can tell? He was not satisfied by Christian explanation. He said, the only place where I can get the explanation is India. He came to India. He searched. And somewhere people said, Lord Shiva is God. Then he studied some literature and he always saw Lord Shiva is in meditation. Then he always questioned, can Lord be in meditation if God, why God would meditate? He's God. God doesn't have to meditate because he's already God. And then he had a friend in Agra University, Professor Roy, and he came there because he's a professor, so he came there. And it happened, his Bengali wife is a Krishna devotee. Then he told him, please go to Vrindavan. You will learn God there, meet the sadhus there. And there he went. And then he gave up his British citizenship. He came to India, lived here, took the name called Krishna Premi and lived his whole life. Similarly, I will give you, there is a German seeker, how he would come, he will reject all forms of God in every culture. He, 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 his standing was very nice. He said, if God at all exists, then the description must, the description of the God must be in one of the cultures. I don't have to manufacture an idea of God. In some culture, the complete description of God must be there. This German descriptor, uh, seeker, he realizes. He rejected Atlas, he rejected this, 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 and finally he came to India. And again, he reached Vrindavan and embraced Krishna consciousness. If you're really interested to understand, you know, what is that uh, Raskan Khan? You might have heard of Raskan Khan. He came from... Uh, Afghanistan, on feet, searching for Krishna. And he has composed so many songs about Krishna. In 2007, uh, I met one Muslim professor in, uh, uh, what is that, Virendra Sarup, uh, uh, here in Kanpur, that is an uh, MBA, you know, what is it? Management Institute. And uh, he invited me to give a talk on Bhagavad Gita. And he was telling, he gave me a, a, a name of many Muslim scholars who have described the glories of Krishna. So, see, if somebody is sincere to know Krishna, I can give you this much guarantee. 
you will understand krishna not as a hindu god but as absolute truth people will even love with krishna ha eh? sa so, sa so it is not that krishna is only god for you know have you heard about anchor what uh, no sir anchor what in cambodia ha eh? people are saying that this is probably many many years old this is the most famous vishnu temple you go to anchor wat i have gone there okay eh you go to anchor wat and you will see every temple there is uh, this uh, the, the diorama of this devasura sangra you understand devasura sangra the yes, demigods sir. and demons that churn the milk ocean yes sir i understand ah uh, so that diorama everywhere and if you go to the bangkok airport this diorama of devasura uh, sangram uh, vishnu uh, in the center and uh, this uh, one side demigod the other side demons uh, this is as a, as a as a main diorama is in the center of the bangkok airport eh uh, everybody takes picture you go to even indonesia their uh, national carrier is garuda okay so vedic culture was existent everywhere we have forgotten because you see that uh, india became a fallen country because of long rule of uh, the muslim rule then british rule and uh, so our economy was uh, you know was completely collapsed so the, all those there are historical reasons uh, which has happened but now you see at least international society of krishna consciousness is gone uh, at least it has done a great job and it is doing a great job all over the world huh? you go to london you will hear about iskon you go to uh, washington you will hear about iskon and you know the great amount of service is being done all over and we are the foremost among uh, popularizing bhagavad gita teachings and bringing teachings of bhagavad gita into lives of people clear deepak yes sir <clears throat> so uh, means so the examples you gave means what i uh, got to know that like uh, we indians are spreading and people are like uh, Uh, after knowing uh, krishna they are falling in love with krishna so this is what i understood but my question was like uh, previously so was it there for like different countries dif- yeah yeah earlier only there, there was one country okay that is bharatavarsha suppose you 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 know you now go to suppose you will go now to indra's planet okay think of amravati the capital of indra Yes. so how you reach there if you ask there uh, if you if you tell them uh, if they ask you from here you have come if you say i have come from india they will look at you if you say i have come from america again they will raise their eyebrows the moment you say i have come from bharatavarsha then they will have a positive glance upon you they will greet you entire prithvi the earth is known as bharatavarsha all over this universe okay okay so earlier time there was there used to be only one emperor and this emperor used to rule the entire world from delhi which is known as indraprastha okay sir i have another question like uh... so uh, means beyond the seas like then we did not have ships to travel across the sea uh, siege so means there might be people uh, means uh, beyond the siege so which we could not explore by the, by then or at that time so I mean, then uh, how can we conclude that there was only bharatvarsham because then we never traveled the, across the seas oh na in mahabharata there is a reference to europe 
and okay. i have already given you uh, the entire uh, this uh, south east asian countries they were all under the vedic culture uh, if you go to uh, uh, chitrakoot uh, nanaji deshmukh has established a, a museum ram museum and uh, uh, so he has uh, all the records of uh, the entire this uh, southeast asian countries uh, where ram culture was prevalent um, everywhere so uh, so the point here is you have to I, as i told you canada america australia they are very new my dear friend okay the predominant place was this subcontinent of india okay and 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 uh, as i told you this entire earth is known as bharatvarsha if you look at our vedic literature shrimad bhagavatam fifth canto the vedic cosmology description you will see this is part of jambudipa okay now also you will hear many of our indian name is ila ila panda ila patnaik so because ila bruta barsha so if you see see it requires certain education about our history unfortunately for 75 years although we got independence we killed our culture and heritage we are given the stories of european history uh, british history but we were never told about our own history so that is why you are uh, we are uninformed about our own heritage okay uh, sir so it requires you can read uh, uh, subhas kak uh, forgusan and one more author they have written a, a book called india the cradle of civilization okay so subhas yes, kak is a, a computer science professor so they will not uh, and forgusan and other three big researchers they have done lot of research and they have written this book called india the cradle of civilization civilization started from this uh, place only in fact let me tell you kanpur is the foundation of the civilization this uh, bitur here i don't know whether you people have come here or not uh, have you visited kanpur until now uh, yes sir bitur so uh, kanpur there is a bitur bitur is the place where brahma uh, uh this um, made uh, swayamvara manu and satrupa got married here this is the place swayamvara manu and satrupa they got married and first human footprint came in this particular land is not an ordinary place so we have to know the history how many of you know that kanpur the original name was kanapur the original name of kanpur was kanapur is after krishna but the britishers could not pronounce kanapur they said kanpur k w n and then finally it became kanpur but originally it was kanapur so this See, we have not gone through the history and these are all part but the the original human civilization started from this part of uh world. okay okay sir yeah okay i will uh, i have some good information for all of you we have uh, you know we have started an online correspondence course on bhagavad gita detail what i gave you is a synopsis right but we we have to learn also in detail each one of you are very intelligent and uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 
and you must, each one of you should become the ambassador of Bhagavad Gita knowledge. So, uh, can someone put the link of uh, LGLG? LGLG means learn Gita, live Gita. Uh, learn Gita, live Gita. We must learn and we must live. So, learn Gita, live Gita.com. If you go, you can go and register. And we are charging very nominal registration fee for all of you. We will give generous concession also. But then more important is after registering, you have to do the course. So there are 10 lessons. After every lesson, there are objective questions plus subjective questions. You go on answering. There are videos for every lesson have five to six videos. You have to hear, you have to assimilate and then start answering, okay? And uh, so, <clears throat> so uh, I request each one of you, please join this Learn Gita, Live Gita, such that your education will be complete. And I would like, what, what I do normally, those who do well, I make them mentor. That means when new people generate, uh, new people, a join, then you have to mentor them. Like when you will join, we will assign a mentor for you. That means that mentor would guide you when you have some confusion, you have some uh, issues also, personal counseling also the mentor would do. Okay. So, so this is uh, the objective of uh, Learn Gita, Live Gita. So I request all of you to click on this and register. Uh, and uh, uh, that way you will make a very good beginning. Already you have made a good beginning by attending our free um, Bhagavad Gita class course. But now, please, uh, let, us, let us take next step, big step, okay? Uh, Pratik is asking, can we have a WhatsApp group for interaction of members? Yes, Subendu, you can make that. Subendu, Dr. Subendu Samant will be the moderator of this group and he will generate it. No issue. Okay. Also, sir, can we have one another session like before exam, like to help them like how they can deal with the stress, with the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita? And... Yeah. Do you need a, a session for your exam? I think they are mature people. They know how to handle that exam. <laughs> anyway, I wish all of you all the best for your exam. Uh, do well. See, uh, as long as uh, you realize that uh, that you are detached from the result, you always do well. When you are attached to the result, should I score? Uh, should I get 10 point or not, or 9 point or not, 8 point or not. When you look at the result, you won't do well. You put your effort, don't worry about the result. And the result would follow. This is my simple, um, simple uh, advice to all of you. Don't after the results. Okay, so don't be after result. The result will follow. Okay. Okay. The, uh, anybody else would uh, make any other comment? Uh, Hare Krishna, sir. Yeah. Who is speaking? Uh, sir, I'm Anjali. Uh, sir, I'm Anjali. Anjali. Uh, sir, I Yes, sir, I have one question, if time permits you. Yeah, yeah, please. Ah. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, Sachidanand state is, means every time a person can be in that stage and in any location. But in reality, uh, when we are uh, remembering the Krishna or God, only in that time we are in happy mode. 
but when we are engaged with the worldly affairs like uh, labs uh, work projects other things then we are not in that state so i think we need to do some um, conscious efforts to do to achieve to be in that stage so can you guide us how what kind of efforts we can uh, try to do thank you for your nice question anjali that is why we are creating a group group means like now the uh, birds of same feather flock together so when you are in a group who have the similar mindset then your reciprocation would be in that direction right so so three things three principles one is that we must associate with sadhus or devotees or let us say in iit kanpur context we have this bhakti vedanta club so there are club there are many students who are part of this club and they together perform varieties of activities sometime we go to a retreat um and uh, you know when there was no covid in my house we used to have regular program here morning and special program on saturday in the evening and there are many celebration days we get together we enjoy in krishna consciousness so you are right when you hear about bhagavad gita you feel happy and when you go to the lab you feel Uh, very depressed but once you realize that everything you are doing for the pleasure of krishna then you will not be in that status and this is an act you will learn under the guidance so so that is why once you join and you will get guidance each one of you will be provided some guidance uh, just like a small kid is reared cared similarly each one of you needs our each one of you need our care and we are ready for that and that is how we progress and our indian culture is called community ashram ashram means where everybody come together render service share each other's feeling aspiration experience realization and we grow together this is called ashram and ashram culture is very important in india indian tradition teaches ashram culture so you will learn slowly slowly so remain in touch feel and always connected and i i can give you assurance slowly you will also learn the art to how to remain always in happiness whether you are in love or you are in the temple clear anjali yes sir thank you sir yeah can you say something on how to maintain a healthy daily schedule as a phd scholar to be able to cope with the stress dipti ranjan sahu thank you for this uh, wonderful question maybe first of all i will tell you my realization i was also a phd scholar then i became krishna conscious see as i told you today i lost interest in my phd when i saw because i came for phd or i you know i pursued academic career because i thought probably that the scientists and researchers are only honest people on this earth that is the but when i came and i saw things then i realized everybody almost in the same category so when i became krishna conscious uh, i understood what is the teachings of bhagavad gita in 15 days i wanted to give up my phd and i was ready to go to vrindavan 
and uh, that time my professor scolded me and said if you run then others will uh, point finger you that uh, these krishna conscious people are escapist and those days once i started practicing krishna consciousness we would we would chant we will go anywhere and talk to people about uh, bhagavad gita teachings and th- we enjoyed that we enjoyed it very much we enjoyed bringing people and making them sit and our professor would speak to them about bhagavad gita we enjoyed that and uh, and that was very enjoyment and uh, i had no interest in my um phd and i remember my professor from prasad madan gopal uh, who later became again he became a krishna devotee because of my association uh, he once called me and scolded me he said you have you look like a uh, uh, alien entity because before that me and gadre vikram gadre and jaydev we were all uh, a student leader in our department in running ietripli program uh, making um, provisions uh, uh, or making provisions as that phd becomes very attractive for people in india to pursue so i was very much part of the department and they saw i am not seen nowadays in department they were very angry with me and my supervisor told what are you doing a letter my supervisor entered into a very personal problem and he confided in me and said i need some sermon and you know it is um, that was the beginning of my sweet relations with my supervisor and still i was not feeling any motivated how to uh, do my phd because if you look at my schedule those days 4:15 used to be mangal aarti and whether it is cold winter or summer we will take birth at 4 o'clock by 4:15 we are in the our professor's house for mangal aarti and then by the time we come from his house is 8 8:30 and uh, so after coming we will clean our uh, Uh, cloth put them in the cloth line and do little uh, cleaning work in the room so by the time 9 or 10 o'clock uh, and we have some unfinished rounds we will chant and then we'll go to the computer room and i remember those days i would be so tired and once i entered into computer room i'll be sleeping there at least for one hour or so and then i would start doing something but what happened is our determination to remain in krishna consciousness and we understood also because krishna says he gives us the and you will be surprised to know that although i had lost all interest in my phd i published in three and a half years eight journal papers eight journal papers in my phd i am the i am the first in electrical engineering to submit thesis okay so how that happened because when you become krishna conscious then you are so uh focused in one hour what you can achieve otherwise it would take probably a month to achieve i'll share one incident i had sent a paper for those days now days so you can write a paper uh, you have softwares to write like latex or word we didn't have any any of these things in my time we will write in handwriting and then we give it to our supervisor they will correct it and i had two supervisor and after one the second and then i will after, after this is corrected then i will give it to gsri the person who would type it 
he will take four rupees per page for typing. And then once that comes back again, I will correct it. Then I will give it to for second correction to my supervisor. And then it will give in final printing. And then it will be sent to uh, IEEE headquarter, IEEE headquarter in London and IEEE headquarter in America. You can imagine that it goes through surface mail, imagine. And, and with that, I had eight journal papers to publish. I published eight journal papers. And in my time, we could not publish in conferences because conferences, those days we could not pay uh, those uh, uh, registration fees. We didn't have that ability to pay. Uh, and we could publish these papers because at least IIT was generous enough to uh, ship, mail it, uh, uh, that mailing charge IIT was paying. Uh, that, is why, uh, that is how we could do it. And we published, and I am surprised. I have graduated 19 PhDs. None of them have published, uh, published more than three, four papers in journals. And, and maximum they publish nowadays in conferences because I have some projects and they uh, take the money from this project and pay the registration fees. Otherwise, so my dear friend, if you become Krishna conscious, Say, so I will tell you my dincharya daily schedule was four o'clock I get up, 4.15 I go to my professor's house. We do Mangalarati, we do Bhagavatam class, we do chanting and almost by 9, 9.30 I go to my office uh, lab to work there and again five o'clock we are back. At five o'clock we take bath and go by six o'clock, we are in this professor's house. Again, there is evening program. Eight o'clock, we return. And, and eight o'clock, we will do some program in our house, in our uh, hostel room, where we invite others. We feed them some prasadam. We will make a book table. We will demonstrate our Prabhupada books. And we will have some discussion. And that is how we led our life. And uh, and we could finish our PhD very easily. How that happens? Finally, all abilities comes from Krishna. And it is not some theoretical. It is actual. It is actually actual. If you depend on Krishna properly, then Krishna would give you intelligence how to do things effectively and efficiently. And more important, when we became Krishna conscious, we were very happy. We didn't have any anxiety. We didn't have any stress, which I see here. Uh, you know, one of my PhD student, he went mad. He became a, a, you know, he entered into depression. But if you become Krishna conscious, you are spiritually strong, then you will not be suffering from mental anxiety, stress, and you'll be always focused. So even if you, we were told in our time, our professor told, you spend, a PhD scholar should spend every day seven to eight hours. Like for us, for example, I was spending 10 o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the evening, seven hours. And it was sufficient. Seven hours, those seven hours are focused. Mind was not uh, talking. And we are not creating some this story, that story. No, because we are focused on Krishna. Krishna guided us you know, how to do work so that this is published, this is published. Because after all, what a PhD is. If you have publication, you get a PhD. If you don't have publication, you don't get a PhD. Because who would satisfy your PhD if you don't have a publication? So that is why uh, it pays if you lead a spiritual life, you are mind becomes focused, you become more effective. And you see Dr. Suvendu, Dr. Suvendu, he did his PhD and he, be, he has the best PhD uh, award in uh, University of uh, uh, Canada, uh, what is it, Montreal? Uh, in Montreal? Concordia University, Concordia University in Montreal. 
and he got best this is the word right so once you become a devotee then phd becomes very easy because you will not be there will not be distraction otherwise a lot of distraction would be there i hope i have done some justice to you dipti ranjan okay so i thank all of you for joining me um after your exam we will have another session until then all the best i wish you all the best for your exam thank you hari krishna okay